Everyday Juggler, your source for juggling highlights, interviews, tutorials, and reviews. And now your host, Sean Livingston. Hey everybody and thanks for tuning in. I'm really excited for you to watch or listen to this interview. It was a lot of fun to do. Emron took some time graciously to tell us about his clubs and how he's become the juggler that he is today. There's a lot of great advice in it and you're going to love it. But before we get to that, I just want to remind you that if you're watching this, you can now listen to it in iTunes. And if you do listen to iTunes, make sure you leave a review and rating so that way it will be easier to find in the iTunes store. Also want to remind you that you need to head over to my site and pick up the PDF I put together, 15 ways to take your juggling to the next level. It's going to be good for you whether you just started juggling or you've been juggling for a long time. Alright, let's get to that interview. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to this edition of Everyday Juggler Profiles. Today we get to hang out with Emron Ruzva, which I'm butchering his name, but I'm trying my best. Thanks so much for being here with us. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. It's my pleasure, really. Emron's been juggling for 11 years. He's been involved in some clubs and teen circus acts. And most recently, he's gotten YouTube famous, at least in the juggling world, for four different innovations of clubs he's created. And we're going to talk about those a little later. But before we do, could you fill us in on anything I missed about who you are in your juggling life and uh, tell us about a couple of your records? All uh, right. Uh, well, yeah, I've been juggling for 11 years and uh, I started when I was 16. And um, yeah, I'm not sure if there's much more to say. I don't really perform that much and uh, I, I just juggle for a hobby. So, yeah. Fantastic. And, hmm? and tell us about some of your records. Which one would you want to know about? <laughs> okay, how about, how about the two that you're most proud of? Um, it has to be the Albert record because um, I think that's actually one of the most difficult ones, and I also I think I do it for a pretty long time for for that trick. So I think it's like seven hundred catches, mm -hmm. and uh, like I've been working on it really just a lot, like doing like at least one hundred catches every day. I think that's <laughs> wow. that's a lot for me. Like yeah. even when you're not really juggling that day, you're still doing. 100 catches average, like, mm -hmm. and, um, hmm. um, I guess I was pretty proud of the fastest, uh, four clubs with, uh, mm -hmm. in a minute. Yep. I watched that last night. That was, that was pretty impressive. <laughs> but, but, but not the one that I actually have right now, but the one before that, when I did it with a foot balance, because that's why I'm so uh, good at it, because yeah. I, I learned juggling with a foot balance, you know, mm -hmm. and you just juggle really low and fast to see the clubs while mm -hmm. you're looking at the foot balance. Mm -hmm. So uh, I did like 256 or something with a foot balance. And mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was nice. But, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. thought th these aren't records, but I I'm really impressed with how you can take something from your chin and get it down to your foot. Um, uh, yeah. Can you do it the other way around, foot up to your chin? Not while juggling, but okay. uh, without the juggling, I have done it like a couple times in a row and stuff like that. But. Yeah. Um, I want to learn it while juggling. It could be nice. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool if you could just maybe if you could do two in a circle. Oh yeah, that would be insane, dude. <laughs> while you're juggling. Yeah, that would be pretty crazy. Um, when you were talking about your four club record, you you mentioned low low and fast, and something that I've noticed about the way that you juggle is is you tend to juggle just really close to your body, um, and so the clubs are always pretty close to you. Where, where did you learn that technique? I never really thought about it. I guess I've just developed it on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing, technique-wise, that I was taught in circus school was like, and that's, that's the youth circus, so it's not really formal teaching or anything, but it was how to slide the clubs to the knobs while doing back process and, uh, like, you know, not do the this kind of juggling with three balls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, let me do this one instead, yeah. yeah. So... I, I must have just started doing it myself, I guess. Mm -hmm. Cool. So what inspired you to first start juggling? Lots of people in my school were juggling, so I thought I was going to go to that place and check it out. Okay. And so, um, I just got pretty damn obsessed pretty quickly. So mm -hmm. That's pretty that's cool. What kept you going? Was it you just liked it? Yeah, I wanted to learn five balls. But also, I, I really early on started to do endurance runs with like three balls and stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I really liked records actually. 
uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if many like high level jugglers care about records well like, some of them do of course but well uh, I always liked them like they they always felt like um, you did something worthwhile if you did a long endurance run mm -hmm. even if it's just some silly trick it still felt like it would make you a better juggler right somehow hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. so you kind of set your eyes on different records and then work towards those and that kept you in the game yeah i, I was reading on object episodes uh that back in 2005 or 6 that you were practicing you know five hours a day sometimes and and then as kind of life's gone on, sometimes you only practice a few hours a week. Uh, so what, what was different about then and now? Well, I went to school then, and then I didn't, I, I finished school, so I had lots of free time. I didn't have a job to begin with. So um, I just, I just juggled obsessively, I guess. And I burnt out, because 2008, I didn't juggle much at all. Like, I could go months without juggling then. But then I got back into it in 2009 again, so I, I, I've done some breaks every now and then. Like, now I'm pretty much back into it again, so, but, yeah. Okay. All right, so I want to talk about those clubs, but before we do that, uh, what kind of, so say you, there's somebody who, they, they started with balls, that, and they then they started doing clubs, and they can do the three club cascade. They've got that down. Uh, but they want to take it to the next level. Where do you think a good place for them to start is? Um... For a trick, you know? For... Yeah. Or another pattern. Mm. But just learn uh, double spins and triple spins and stuff like that. It's uh, the best thing to start with, I guess, because it will uh, help your numbers. And that's always a good thing to start out with, I think, to just learn like five clubs or something. Mm -hmm. And if you want to do tricks, then, uh, you know, shops, overheads, or like, I mean, outsides, you know? And, uh, Bills mess and stuff like that is pretty good to start out with, I guess. Mm -hmm. So kind of taking some of those those basic ball patterns and, and learning those with clubs as well. Yeah, and uh, I guess shops isn't really used with balls that much. I, I don't know, but I think with clubs it's the most iconic trick, you know. Mm -hmm. It's kind of different with clubs. Yeah, you can't really do triple spins with balls either. No, no. <laughs> well, you can kind of twist them and make them spin, but, well, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, and that only works if they're if they've got different colors on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's pretty pointless. <laughs> <laughs> that would be even more pointless if it was a contact juggling ball, a clear one. That is. Uh, well, maybe if you want to do some some kind of. Uh, uh, never mind. Never mind. Let's move on. So, how many hours do you think you put into juggling clubs to get to where you are today? Yeah, like. I used to over exaggerate I think the number of hours I actually put in so I really wanted to like make it seem like I, I juggled uh, super many hours but I really don't think I can say that I, I think it's not even more than like 10,000 or something like that it's probably around eight at this point okay uh, and that's uh, I don't think it's a lot actually like I know Jay Gilligan has juggled just rings for like 20,000 hours or something like that. So <laughs> okay. that's pretty crazy. Yeah. And also, the jugglers, professional jugglers I met, they say that a real juggler has to have like all this messed up hands and stuff like that. It has to be like, you have to tape them together with, you know, tape and glue and stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you juggle eight hours a day and I've never done that. So <laughs> I can't really. Can't well, really I, I don't know. I think some people are, are more natural than others. So. Those professional jugglers just had to work a little bit harder than maybe you have. Maybe. Hmm. You're just naturally good at juggling. Yeah. I'm not, no. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I'm not sure, dude. I'm not sure. Uh, so how, how do you think, you know, that's still a lot of hours. So how do you think you made time, or how have you made time to, to be able to do that over the years? Mm. Well, you know, you've you got to... <laughs> You gotta just uh, take the time, dude. And uh, if you have a job, you just have to, you know. I mean, I, I did go unemployed for quite a bit, and then it's easy, right? Mm. Because then you have all the time. But when you have a job, you just uh, you have to keep the energy up and keep, you know, eating right and doing everything that you can to keep your 
keep your focus up during the day so that you can go on juggling when you get home. Mm-hmm. And also, like, it really helps to have a space in your apartment where mm-hmm. you can juggle mm-hmm. because then you can just go juggle whenever you like and not have to prepare for like 15 minutes and then go take the bus for like 30 minutes and then yep. go juggle for like two hours and then may- maybe you don't even feel like it when you get there. I don't know. Like, right. So that really helps. I yeah. Think. You just said something really interesting that I, I kind of want to make sure that everybody heard. And that is, you said eat right. Um, and what I, what I heard there is you got to stay healthy. Like you have to be yeah. living a lifestyle that when you get home, you don't want to just sit down on the couch and watch TV, but that you're ready to kind of put a couple hours in. Yeah, for sure. That's really important. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting. All right. So when you're... I, I take it when I when I watch what you're doing with clubs that that you've learned some things that you saw others do, but also that you've kind of created your own tricks. Um, when you're working on new tricks with your clubs, where where do you find your inspiration, or how do you find new things to do? Hmm. Sometimes it's accidents, like you you mess up a trick you wanted to do, and it does something completely different, and you find out oh it can do this, mm-hmm. and you kind of can learn that, and. Uh, Sometimes I just think about stuff from my everyday life, which uh, maybe you could apply some concept to to your juggling. Um, I do this right now with, uh, I, or I did this rather. I have a video of it already with um, the bouncing platform, which which I bounce ping pong balls on. Right, like that was heavily inspired by echoes, at least. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so it's a, it's a really silly, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Who was your inspiration? Who did you look up to the most as you were learning to juggle? Hmm. It, um, when I was learning to juggle, it must be... Hmm. It's actually... I, I don't, I'm not sure, actually, who I looked up to the most at that point. I did uh, go to Wrecked Up Juggling and see a lot of good jugglers there, so, like... Peter Bone, Luke Burridge, and um, people like that were actually really inspiring to me. And of course, the Swedish jugglers were also. I mean, I'm, I went most of all to the Swedish juggling sites, mm-hmm. or it was like one site, I guess, at that time. Uh, and um, but uh, there weren't that many videos around. So, mm-hmm. well, around 2007, and so I was heavily inspired by Elias Edlund and. Uh, uh, Elias Larsson mm-hmm. and then uh, later Wes Peden and the, 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 the Albi crew like the people who gone to the circus school in mm-hmm. Stockholm mm-hmm. Um, I guess I guess you could definitely say though that uh, Herman Sandqvist and uh, Robin Jäderfeldt were huge inspirations to me when I started juggling because they were like the top jugglers in the circus place when I went to Okay. and uh, yeah I, I, I you, I kind of take it for granted, I suppose, but uh, obviously they would be the biggest inspiration because they were around and they they were pretty good actually. Like Hadman can do seven clubs and uh, Bobo can do like five club back process and a pirouette under it, so they are pretty hardcore with clubs. So. Yeah, awesome. All right, so your clubs it looks like you've got kind of four different kinds that you've developed most recently, um, but yeah. you've been innovating on clubs for years. So where did that start? Uh, well, I, I did write about this on Object Episodes. Um, I, pretty much when I first got my first uh, pirouettes, they have this black top which protects the, the screw at uh, the bumper in the nose of the club. And um, to me, that just made me re- relate to like the ferrite magnets, which are iron-based and kind of black, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so I, I just thought about them. I'm not sure why I thought about them, but I thought that, damn, it would be cool if it was a magnet instead of uh, just a foam thing there, right. I suppose. So, years later, when my brother got some new, new magnets, I went ahead and uh, glued them into these clubs, which are the ones I used in the first video. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, it started with magnets, uh, and you describe them now as, like, ultra-magnetic. <laughs> And, and you also um, are able to su- attach super. them to your shoes, it looks like. so. Yeah, and I can show the shoes. I have them right here. So I just took bike shoes and screwed on a oh, couple, right. couple plates 
you know, and I sold them into the right shape and yep. screw them on. So that's how they work. And so, uh, I also, yeah. When you're okay. when you're on stilts with when you're using them as stilts, that mm-hmm. is that nerve wracking at all? Oh well, I I, I didn't. Uh, I was actually hanging from a lunge as well, but um, okay. you can see the straps. So the weight distribution is actually like eighty twenty to, you okay. know, or you know, four to one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I'm not standing that much on the clubs because it's super scary. Like it, they are super <laughs> unstable. Yeah. If you had, however, like more plates, like if you had a flat sole shoe with just uh, just iron plate under the whole sole mm-hmm. and then put maybe like two clubs under one shoe then yep. it would not as a, the problem is that they they can break loose and once right. they do they don't support you at all so it's really <laughs> fucking scary <right? laughs> sorry <laughs> it's okay so maybe on the next rendition um you'll get even stronger magnets yeah <laughs> you're like maybe nice. maybe not <laughs> Well, I, I have actually made stronger clubs than the ones I have right now here as well. So, okay. sure, yeah. <laughs> like, I kind of want to make that trick happen for real without the lunch. Or, I don't know how you pronounce it. That kind of sounds like um, food, but, you know, the... We, we would lunch. call it a harness. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think that would be pretty neat. So... I want to talk about kind of each of the different renditions of clubs and kind of what you see their use cases as. So like how, how you might use them in a performance or just even just as a hobby, just for fun. Uh, so I think you've done the most work with magnetic clubs. So this will be the easiest. Uh, how, how do you foresee people using these in the future? Yeah. Um, it's hard to say. Like the, for sure, there are. Um, I think people will just explore a lot of uh, Lego stuff with them, and uh, for, because that's the kind of thing you can do a lot with, I suppose. But uh, I would really like to see people uh, work more on the connect on the fly kind of moves, where you connect them from throws and maybe swing them and just throw them again in the connected shape when mm-hmm. they are, you know, two clubs together or something, mm-hmm. and then um, like. Just do crazy stuff like break them apart and uh, general performance. Well, I mean, I guess we can't really imagine what people are going to come up with, but no, it's kind of. But that'll be cool to see, as people get their hands on them. And uh, but how have you used them so far? You can kind of see most of what I did early on with the first clubs in the first video. Mm-hmm. Like, I, sure, I did more stuff than that, but I've just been messing around and jamming. All right, great. So. Uh. Another set or kind of clubs you call the spinny clubs. Yeah. Can you Let's tell see. us about this? Yeah. It has a ball bearing, so it, the top can spin. Uh, so it's just a plastic bearing underneath the top here. Okay. So that's the only difference. And uh, well, yeah, and it's a magnet as well. So okay. it can catch. Because, of course, I think with a lot of practice, you could, I mean, you can, you can already with a normal club catch a club like this lying down right mm-hmm. and balance it like this it's mm-hmm. it's easier than a normal balance kind of well maybe not but so i suppose if you were really good at catching it exactly at the center it would be able to spin without the magnet but i also prepared clubs which would stick to this so okay do you have <laughs> so one of those can you show us that well it just looks like a normal club because it's it does just have a, a piece of metal inside okay. at the c- center point where it's supposed to stick mm-hmm the only bad thing about it is it has to be turned at the right angle. Like if it's upside down, it will just fall off. But right. it has to be like this, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Hmm. I guess there's no way to fix that. <laughs> well, no, well, of course, you could just make a metal band around the entire inside of the club, around that center point. Oh, God. I, yeah. I didn't do that. Like, I, I think if I'm going to fake it, I want to do it a bit challenging at least, I guess. <laughs> hmm. Um, yeah. So, so did you to to make the spinny club? Did you essentially cut off the bottom and then install bearings and then, like, how did you connect the the bottom of the club back to the to the club? Well, I just cut up cut off the top right, mm-hmm. like the, the nose part, mm-hmm. and uh, you have to support it with the the, the stick inside, right? And you, you can't touch the parts which are going to spin. Well. 
hmm, I should have a bearing to show what, well, the, the inside of the bearing has a, an axle sticking up, which connects to the magnets, and the, the magnet holds the top of the club. Okay. Like, so, so the outside of the, like, the, the outside diameter of the bearing can be supported by a cone from the center of the club, from the, you, you know, the, the Ashwood core. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's how it connects, and I just just glued the rest so it will not move or anything. Mm-hmm. And I was actually surprised it held up so good. I, I dropped it a few times, and I'm pretty scared because I I think it would break easily. But it's suppose it it went okay. Like all right, effort. great, mm. more more durable than than thought. Mm. Yeah. All right. The another type of club you had was the motor club. Yeah. Um, do you have one of those to show us? Yeah, sure. <laughs> this is really silly. Uh, I just put on pretty much the same thing as the, the other one. Uh, I just cut off here and put in a motor here. Okay. So when I put it down on something, it can spin. Okay. <laughs> and when I... There's no magnets actually on it at all. Like, I just took a piece of electrical tape and put a club here to make it show that it was spinning. And if, if I press here, it will start. So... <laughs> That's so great. Yeah. How does that affect the club when it's in the air? If, if it's well, it's, it's really front heavy. That's mm-hmm. well. I mean, the actual. <laughs> well, it, I didn't notice much of a difference of it running. Like it's just very front heavy. Okay. All yeah. Right. Actually. Huh. All right, and then another kind of club that you had, and these were, I think, really cool, were the divisible clubs. Yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> so, so it looks like looks like a regular club, but it comes yeah. apart. Yeah, and the the magnet the composition is so that no matter where you take it apart, all the the magnets will all just stick <laughs> together, even if you turn it upside down and everything like that. And uh, you can do, <laughs> you know, this kind of thing with it, and mm-hmm. a lot of other similar variations which require a bit more setup, but. Like, a lot of stuff is um, possible with this, mm-hmm. and uh, it's definitely my favorite. Yeah. I guess it's kind of hard to show this on the podcast. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it comes apart in four pieces, and there's uh, five magnets in every piece, and you can connect them even if you turn one of the pieces upside down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, stuff like that. Um, for anybody listening to this, they can they can get on YouTube and check it out. Um. Yeah, those are really cool. Where did you come up with the idea for that? Uh, it was very much inspired by Eric Oberg's Ghost Cube. Okay. Mm-hmm. I I just got the idea from watching him doing that. Like, great great stuff, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, my original idea was that I would make it in eight pieces, but uh, I think it would be too fragile and uh, not as useful if I would do that. So. Mm-hmm. And I, I I really wanted to be able to make that a hole in the club, so you could do like ring tricks, <laughs> like negative space. You you grab things through the club, <laughs> stuff like that. I wanted to be able to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now you had a a story on object episodes about on a couple of stories. I wanted you to kind of retell here. One of them was was your experience with magnets growing up. Yeah, that's probably why I thought about the magnets when I saw the, the first uh, club, I guess. When I started with clubs. Uh, when I was like five years old, I used to go to, like earlier as well, of course. But when I went to my grandma's place, she would let me play with a box of ferrite magnets. So, And I would sit under a chair with the iron legs and mm-hmm. put magnets on them and pr- pretend I was building like a cockpit or something with buttons and stuff. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So, and I, I remember doing that a few times, like they would bring out that box of magnets and stuff. They were working at some soldering company, they were doing um, circuit boards and stuff like that. So they had, I think they got magnets from there or something, like I'm not sure, but well, mm-hmm. yeah, that was <laughs> pretty fun, I guess. So you had a lot of fun with magnets growing up and that kind of impacted you even now. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Um. And then you also had a story about where you, where you got the idea for your your motorized club, and I thought that was I thought that was pretty funny. So, 
Well, <laughs> you mean I got this birthday party? Like a birthday present, I mean? Um, well, you didn't mention it was a birthday present. No. <laughs> you... Yeah, right. So, someone gave me, like, this um, electrical uh, steering machine, or what's it called? Like, you, you, you know. Stir- stir- stirring? Stir- like, a, yeah. like two, like, mixers? It's yeah, like a, a mixer. mixer. Pretty yeah. much, yeah. And, uh, well, I, I just didn't feel like I had any use for it, so it was just laying around. Then I started taking it apart, and, like, I got to just having the, the motor, and I thought, like, well, I can start it like this, and maybe I can put it on something, and it will spin by itself. Like. And it did that, and I was, like, putting it on the balance platform with the plexiglass, and, like, having it spin there, and, like, hmm, this is kind of funny, but just do, like. And uh, then I let it, I just put it in a club, because it, it would fit, so <laughs> thought it would be cool. Mm-hmm. So I'm just inspired by things in my environment i guess yeah that's that's really interesting i i was thinking about this on the last interview i did too trying to figure out how we can kind of engage with just our everyday world and and then use that to innovate on juggling and it seems like you're doing that you know every day you, um, you gotta try pretty hard to actually come up with something that works so like you have to have a lot of ideas that doesn't work before you find something that you can kind of do something interesting with i guess how many ideas have you had that didn't work <laughs> who knows dude <laughs> I, I guess you forget about them after a while <laughs> yeah you don't want to remember those ones um mm. how many uh iterations of the magnetic clubs have you gone through yeah i'm at uh, the fort it, well, if you count the original ones, and also maybe the goal was from the beginning to be able to build clubs that I could stand on. So, like, I guess five iterations, really, mm-hmm. before I arrived at the point I am now. And that includes the clubs which we haven't seen in the video yet, which have even stronger magnets than these ones, which will probably work then with the new idea for the, the shoes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I did try them outside on a... You know, a sewer entrance. What's it called? Like the the iron lock on a uh, sewer grate. Like manhole or manhole, yeah, yeah, manhole lock or something. Yeah, and uh, I could put three of them nose down and stand on the other side, no problem. Like that was, I could stand on that for le- how long I wanted, and you can't move on that. And it was just right. on one leg, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, I think uh, for sure. Two of two clubs with those kind of shoes will probably work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I'm excited to see you try it successfully. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Um, one yeah. of the things that I wanted to talk about a little bit more. Again, I saw this on Object Episodes. You were, you were saying as you juggled clubs a while ago, you always thought it would be cool. I, I think you were saying you always thought it would be cool if you could essentially put clubs through your body, if. if if, if things could just go through you but you know obviously that's impossible yeah yeah uh, and um, that's uh, another idea i had i guess uh when i was doing lots of body trolls and i'm always doing lots of body trolls so well i guess it was around 2009 or something when i started thinking about that and uh, the clubs however they kind of can reach around you like they have a different shape which you cannot see right Mm-hmm. The, the magnet affects things. You can lift stuff through your hand and, and things like that. I don't know if these connect, but like this is through my finger, right? So right. Mm-hmm. That can do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, hmm. Well, I, I guess I didn't really explain that very well at all because. Mm. Uh, yeah, like. It would be cool if you could like do half contortion, then you know just move your arm through your body instead, like mm-hmm. <laughs> like go over here without pulling it back. Because the travel time in body throws is a really big uh, limitation mm-hmm. for the combos you can do. Like, well, it, it doesn't really limit, but it makes it some combos way, way, way harder than others. Like, for example, if you do reverse back process into Albert, that's super hard compared to doing Albert into reverse back process, which is super easy. Mm-hmm. So, But then it wouldn't be as impressive either if, if it was well, easier. Well, no, no, of course. Like, yeah. it's, uh, and it's just a silly thing to think about anyways. Like, mm-hmm. mm. So the, the way the clubs are, are made right now, 
they they're set uh you know plus minus so they pull together they don't repel each other yeah um have you have you thought about what it might look like to to make clubs that were the opposite yeah well i have tried that as well and i thought it would be cool if you could like do a very unstable balance or something like that you make it hover oh yeah but it's uh, super impossibly hard like it's (laughs) it's crazy um Mm -hmm. i was thinking like as you're juggling like even just like a cascade if they were strong enough they would they would sort of you know as one went up it would kind of push this one over here you know yeah and that would be a pretty cool effect if you could get it to work yeah for sure it would be pretty crazy it would require super strong magnets actually affect the clubs from a great distance though like even just like 10 centimeters away or something like that it would Mm -hmm. be probably require some crazy strong 200 kilo magnets or something like that no i I mean 200 strength magnets. right right well (laughs) so as i'm looking at these things at at your clubs i'm kind of wondering what they look like on the inside do you have anything do you have any way to show us anything on the inside of these right now uh yeah uh so i replaced the the wood doll with an iron pipe simple Mm. as that it's the same diameter as the the wooden dowel in Henry's clubs, and then I just take a, a threaded stem, or like now, not a threaded stem, like an inside threaded. Um, what you call these? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what they'd be called either. So we'll use a Swedish Swedish word. Skalmutter. <laughs> it's threaded on the inside, so it's not bolt. It's the other thing. Well, it's uh, well. I mean, it is, it is a bolt. But it's like it a double double sided bolt. I, I don't okay. know. Okay. Yeah. Right. And yeah, you just uh, glue it inside there with super strong metal epoxy, and it, it, like there's no way it will come loose from that. And uh, you do it on both sides, and you get uh, a pretty cool effect actually. Uh, and that's something I'm working on. If you wanna see this. Sure. <laughs> uh, that you can instead instead of just uh, having the magnets glued in place, which they are now, I, I did screw them on, then glue them in place to make them. You know, I, I was expecting to stand on them, so I don't want them to like start to get loose or something. Right. And uh, a counterweight. It's the another bolt at mm-hmm. the other end of the club. Mm-hmm. And uh, of course, you can take something and just screw it on there. So you can like oh. modify your clubs pretty quickly and mm-hmm. do something like this and you, this is magnetic so you can you can stick a magnet club here and you can yeah it's a hole so you can yeah yeah maybe put a stick through there or something i don't know yeah maybe then, add uh, some add a cane into the mix yeah of course that would be awesome and of course then you could just instead of having the tops uh, and bottoms uh, fixed like this you could just make screw on tops and change them very quickly so like this is at the wrong end now but like yeah imagine it's the top of the club and you have a normal club again well Mm -hmm. more or less normal Mm -hmm. it's actually not that much heavier with the the iron pipe instead of a wood core like Mm -hmm. it may be 50 grams or something it's not much actually so it behaves more or less like a normal club and yeah like you can also just this is this is the magnets i use so they have a a threaded stem like this Mm -hmm. so um then you have like very easily customizable clubs mm-hmm. and you can of course do a lot of different things than the ones i showed you there like just find just buy a threaded stem and make something of your own you can even you know i guess take this out and connect uh, you know multiple clubs in a line <laughs> oh, okay. so it's, it's you know similar to the to this other thing here you could do that with the magnets too yeah but it's it becomes more stable with this i suppose like you can you cannot break it apart very mm-hmm. easily at all uh, um yeah and you can use it as a tall balance or something like that. now here's the question if if you were if you connected let's say 10 clubs together so you had five sets of two and then yeah. you did a five club cascade does that count as juggling 10 clubs uh well, yeah, I guess it does, but uh, it's juggling that kind of uh, configuration of clubs, ten of them. You yeah, know. it's 
it's not the same as <laughs> Ten Club <laughs> Fountain, of course. Yeah, that's funny though. Uh, so do you have anything else you're you're working on that you haven't told anybody about yet? Um, yeah, well, I have some new projects, I suppose. I'm going to work on more stuff with balls, and uh, also these are kind of funny. Uh, it's just uh, two magnets, mm -hmm. which it's just uh, it's a funny thing. Just you can throw them, and they they keep bouncing on each other, mm -hmm. and you can also like throw them together in the air, and they mm -hmm. will connect. Mm -hmm. Kind of fun thing like that. That w that was actually in the U.S. about two or three years ago. That was like a toy that got really popular. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is that and, thing. And it got it got banned from what? like like they can't sell them anymore because I I don't know what was happening. They they decided they were too dangerous for kids or something. Yeah, you can't you shouldn't like swallow magnets or something. They can like <laughs> pinch your intestines and stuff like that. So like, maybe something like that happened. Yeah, that probably. <laughs> hmm. So on uh, object episodes, you mentioned you said. You know, I'm working on an artsy thing too, and I'm not. I'm keeping that a secret for now. I was wondering if you wanted to give anybody a sneak peek. Oh well. Oops. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm sitting on my roller ball, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I basically I, I did post on Facebook that I did get to show Plastic Mind on uh, on a big screen for, in a film me maker meeting. Oh neat. And uh, yeah, like. They really liked it and like for real, really thought it was pretty cool. So like, I mean, f for sure, not the the video itself, maybe because mm -hmm. they are pretty hardcore with making nice videos and stuff like that. But they they were inspired by the juggling apparently. So mm -hmm. like, I got a p bunch of people's cards and stuff like that, and some of them want to like hang out and um, talk about some collaboration project. Oh man, that's great. Yeah, like <laughs> it's uh, it's a great opportunity to show. This kind of nerdy juggling that I do to normal people, I suppose, because mm -hmm. it, it seems like they regularly get to sell their productions to like Swedish televisions and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. The last few weeks, I feel like I've seen a lot of, um, kind of uh, film film producers, like short film producers, putting out like juggling films, um, mm -hmm. and and they all you know get hundreds of thousands of hits on YouTube. So. If you can work something out like that, that could be a really great way to kind of get the word out about what you're doing. Um, mm. Speaking of which, do you see uh, your, especially the visible clubs, do you see that being something you want to put in the market? Or is it more like uh, you have them and they're nice and if you want them, you're going to have to make them yourself? Uh, they're... I, I would really like to be able to produce a small series of them and maybe sell or something. Like, uh, I've looked into some possibilities, but it's um, it's going to be pretty expensive either way. So, mm -hmm. and the one I made <laughs> is pretty expensive as well. So, mm -hmm. it's. Uh, I mean, sure, you can make them out of wood, I suppose, you, and do them yourself pretty easily, and uh, figure out the magnetic com uh, configuration, like. There are several different possibilities with that as well. So, like, but I, I really want to make them, to mm -hmm. to, ma to get some some kind of uh, plastic molding company or something like that to make a series for me. Mm -hmm. I I looked around a bit, but it's something that I just have to wait on because uh, it it will cost too much. Like, it's yep. it's going to be really costly to make us even a small series because mm -hmm. the molds are so expensive, right? I see. Yeah, I guarantee you if. If you're able to get them made one day, that you'll have lots of people buying them because they're, you know, they're pretty neat. Mm. I would get a set. <laughs> yeah, I guess you would actually only need like one or two because you can do so much with them already. Like it's, mm. it's crazy. Like maybe three. It's, yeah, it's good, yeah. But, Don't undersell you know. yourself. <laughs> at least three. You need at least three. Sure. So everything you showed us has been super cool really excited to kind of see what what other innovations you come up with and then really hoping that one day they'll be in other people's hands so we can kind of see what other people will do with them uh and and i think the the next question i want to ask you is is how you've seen juggling kind of make impact other people's lives and make their lives better you know it's it gives you something i guess to 
feel like you're, something you're good at, I suppose. Mm -hmm. To me, it was um, something where, um, like, I wasn't really good at sports and stuff in school, so, like, I didn't expect to have an easy time with juggling, but, uh, you know, if you keep doing it, you will learn it, so you, I guess you get better self-confidence and stuff like that as well, so, mm -hmm. like, uh, I, I mean, that probably holds true to pretty much everyone, right? So mm -hmm. that, uh, gets into juggling because juggling is seen as kind of hard I suppose mm -hmm. like difficult mm -hmm. right maybe yep mm -hmm. so so when you start juggling it, it kind of it makes you feel like you're good at something you can accomplish something gives you something to work towards um you even said it makes you smarter because it's getting your brain going those are all awesome yeah things. and as well you learn how to learn things by practicing how to juggle right you, you break things down and stuff like that you have to do that for harder tricks right mm -hmm. so and that's uh, you can apply that to other things as well so it's really good in that way mm -hmm. speaking of tricks uh what's your favorite trick to do hmm. well i suppose it is full contortion with clubs okay <laughs> i mean <laughs> it may, maybe not the trick i do most but uh, i really like it it's a good trick i think okay is, is it the, one of the more difficult ones for you to do yeah, it, it is kind of difficult, actually. Like, maybe I would arbitrarily rate uh, Albert as a 5, 5.2 maybe, and uh, Treble as like a 5.7, and flat back versus and uh, full contortion around uh, a 6.3 or something like that. So okay. it's like a pretty difficult trick. Like, it's, uh, it's hard to do for long periods of time, for sure. Mm -hmm. But the thing I really like about it is that you go into this different mode, right? You have your arms here instead. Mm -hmm. And you can do, that's like a base pattern, like the, the, the way I do it is like reverse cascade, right? Mm -hmm. But you can do, you can throw one that goes over your shoulder and behind your back and catch it over here from, like you can tweak this as, you mm -hmm. know, a base, um, base pattern or something like that. Mm -hmm. Can you even see this now? Yeah, you yeah. Can. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so you're saying in addition to being, you know, difficult, you can also be pretty versatile with it just like you would if it you know your hands were in front yeah but it's uh, like it's very limiting with what you can actually accomplish because it's kind of difficult to do tricks in it but it's something for the future for sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um you said when when we were emailing about setting up this interview you mentioned that you watched the mike moore profile and that mm -hmm. after watching it, it inspired you to juggle blind so you did it until you could <laughs> qualified juggle with blind how, how <laughs> that's pretty impressive had you ever done it before or did you just decide to try it after watching i haven't tried with four clubs uh but i have i have done like maybe 80 catches or something with three ball mills mess <laughs> but that's about it like that was a long time ago as well okay but uh, four clubs was i actually expected it to be easier but then i saw that the record was only like six catches and i had already done eight so it was like well, that's, <laughs> that's nice <laughs> i guess you need to record that and get that online that's that's maybe. not that's not such a hard record to to beat though you need something harder to work towards yeah like i i, I was totally expecting to do like maybe 30 catches or something like i, I wanted to do more right? so something like that hopefully coming up <laughs> okay maybe, like so we were talking about during the interview we talked about how Niels Duniker has the I think it's three clubs if we're like at 18 minutes or something so mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't know if you want to do that that I, I, juggling with your eyes closed for 18 minutes just doesn't sound fun to me but you can do shorter shorter goes with four or five clubs yeah you can definitely try harder tricks right and well yeah, I, I wouldn't be going for the three club record. I'm not really interested in that actually. But uh, maybe like trying blind back recess or something like that. Um, essentially, I think I, I should be kind of good at them because I look at the foot balance a lot, and they are like half blind, more mm. or less. Mm -hmm. um, especially five clubs with the foot balances. That's that's. I think I could probably flash five clubs blind actually very easily because I've done it with a foot balance and then you like only see your hands and you can't see anything else so okay <laughs> like it's it's crazy I think yeah that's that's impressive um have you uh, been to many juggling festivals like maybe five or something like not right. very many which one was your favorite 
Mm. It has to be SCC, yeah. Swedish Juggling Convention in 2007, I suppose. I think that was my very first Juggling Convention as well. Mm-hmm. Like, I, or maybe, no, it, maybe it's like 531 in, um, when Michael Morshen was there. That was pretty cool to see him in live and talk about stuff. That was, that was neat. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, probably that. Okay, so you so when you're going when you've gone to the festivals, you've appreciated that there's been other jugglers that are amazing and that's been inspiring to to what you do. Yeah, that's the biggest thing, of course. Like that's definitely the biggest thing with festivals to see everyone else do like this underground people which you've never seen on the internet do this super crazy stuff. That's <laughs> the best part, <laughs> really. Yeah, that's awesome. And, uh, yeah, hmm. uh, I. I would ask this, but I, I think we already know the answer, but just confirm for us what's your favorite prop to use? Yeah, it's clubs. <laughs> and what's your favorite brand or type type of clubs? Uh, Henry's uh, Pirouette, the, that specific type of club. It's the first club I got, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's the, the, their best club, I think. I have also some Delphins and a uh, Mirage, but... Pirates are just much nicer, I think. Mm-hmm. They, I think delphins feel kind of like they, they, they almost feel like some kind of toys, almost like uh, okay. I'm, I know they're really good clubs, but uh, like they're not for me. I, I never like them. Mm-hmm. They're a bit lighter, and uh, the handle is not wrapped, mm-hmm. and the top is different. But like, yeah, a, a lot of things is different with them. But hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just have to mention that because, like, almost everyone around that juggle Henry is actually juggle dolphins. It feels like it's the most uh, common club to see amongst jugglers, I think. I see. Mm-hmm. At least around here. Mm-hmm. Mm. Good. All right. So, before we go, I was wondering if you would tell us where we can find you if people want to check out your videos. Uh, and then also if they just want to connect with you if they have any questions. And then also if you would give a, a word of advice to the, the community, the juggling community at large and, on how to how to be a better community. Wow, okay. Well, you can find me at uh, YouTube, really, or some juggling forums like Object Episodes or Juggling Edge, maybe, sometimes. I'm there. But, and just uh, search for Amaron Roswell, I suppose. So that's one thing to do. And for advice for the juggling community, hmm. uh, I think the juggling community is already so amazing at this point. So it's just keep doing whatever you're doing because you're obviously doing a good job, everyone. <laughs> like every time you go onto like juggling rock on Facebook and you see <laughs> new videos, there it's like always someone doing something. It's super crazy. So like, mm-hmm. and uh, mostly new cool things, I think. So. Mm-hmm. Well, to me at least maybe i haven't been watching every single video so I, maybe they're not all new but whatever like, mm-hmm. you're gonna start somewhere as well don't be shy to like do someone else's tricks to as a stepping stone to do your own mm-hmm. even cooler tricks later right mm. so just keep being innovative trying new yeah. things that's great all right well thanks everybody for tuning in for this episode of everyday juggler profiles thanks again for being with us you're welcome. And uh, until next time, keep on juggling. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, be sure to support the channel. Leave a comment, like, share, and subscribe.